Right. Okay, y'all. I think we're ready to start. Willow, you want to come sit with your dad or are you good? Okay, you can sit in the front. I'm standing up here. You want to sit in the front? Up to you. Okay, we're going to start, okay? All right, everybody. Okay, well, let's pray. You want to pray up here? Okay, or go sit right there. Okay, great. All right, guys. Well, uh, thank everybody for coming. We have a guest from all the way from Canada. That's amazing. Canada. Yeah. So glad everybody's here. Okay, let's open in prayer and just ask the Lord to come and be with us today. All right. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you right now for everybody that was able to come today. Thank you for this message, Lord. I know you gave it to me kind of last minute. I thought I was going to do something else, but thank you for that. I just ask you to have your way today, Lord, and to break any chains, any bondage that's over these kids, that's over their parents. We ask you to do it, Lord. We need your help. We thank you for doing it in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Did you say amen? That was so cute. Okay, guys. What a topic. Forgiveness. Who needs that? Oh, yeah. oh, look! The whole crowd. Amazing. Okay, well, let's jump into this. Who's it for? Me. It is for you. Who else is it for? Lauren? Everybody. And specifically, who is forgiveness for? Sinners. Sinners? What about husbands? Yeah. What about teachers? Teachers. Yeah. Ex-wives. Ex-wives. Fathers. Fathers. Ourselves. Hey, ourselves. Yeah. So you mean we count too? Okay. So let's see what, what, what I put here. What about friends? Yeah. Even friends can make mistakes, right? Yeah. We can have people that we really care about and that we love and that we think they would never do anything to offend me or to hurt me. And then you find out something happens, right? And you find yourself in a place where you need to forgive. Yeah. That's common. Family. Family. Who knows about family trouble? Me. <laughs> <laughs> who knew? <laughs> I don't think there's anyone in here who doesn't know about family. Parents? I do. Brothers and sisters? I know. Presley, have you ever had to forgive Madison? Yeah? Okay. Great. That's Uh oh, what's happening here? What's happening? Hold on. Somebody doesn't like it. We can't hear the show. The source is Bluetooth. Oh, it's been interrupted. Yeah. Seems like it. I love you, girl. You're so precious, you know that. There we go. You are so sorry about that interruption. Yes, you are. Okay. All right. Back to this. Okay, here we go. Family and parents and siblings, uncles, aunts, cousins, right? We've got all types of situations that happen with family members. No, we don't. What about strangers? Strangers, no. What's a situation that you could encounter with a stranger where you'd have to forgive them? Angel? I was just thinking road rage. Okay. You got your kid in the car, you got your kid in the car, somebody cuts you off and you get into fear no. and your, you know, your emotions are heightened and you remember it all day long and replay it and how dare they? No, we just, we just drop it and we forgive them. We forgive them, right? School kids. Presley, didn't we just talk about that in the last one when you gave your testimony about bullies? Okay. We had to forgive them, right? Right. And how did that go? Good. Yeah. Was it better than holding on to the unforgiveness? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Teammates. Does anybody play sports in here or ever played sports? Not me. Not, you're in gymnastics. Yeah. So you have other people around you, other kids, right? Yeah? You, you might have a situation where you have to forgive them. Yeah, well, I can do that. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's great. And yourself. Does anybody in here have a situation in their life where they've had to forgive themselves? I do. Yes. That one can be the hardest one, can't it? Yeah. 
Yes. That can be the most difficult. Why? Why is it so hard to forgive ourselves? Because we, we got God in us. The blame, blame, the shame, the mistakes that we've made. But Jesus came so that we could have that forgiveness. He already forgave us. Why? Because he loves us. Why? What's the Bible say about forgiveness? Now, this is just a handful. There's way more in the Bible about forgiveness than these. But let's... Let's read this. Presley, can you read that first one for us? Um, yeah. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. What's that mean? Um, it's like to forgive everyone how like, God forgave you. Kind of. Yeah, exactly. So the same kindness and mercy that Jesus extended us, we are to give out to others. Okay? All right. Tenderhearted. Having a soft heart towards somebody that cut you off in yeah. traffic and almost got you in a wreck it can be tough, no, right? We need the Lord in that. We have to ask him for his love. Echo. Okay. Echo. Mark 11. Echo. Hang on, Willow. Hang on. I will, I'll get to you in a minute, okay? Mark 11, 25. Teresa, you want to read that? Yes. And whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your Father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Now that's a big one. So, when you're praying, who are you going before? God, okay? He doesn't, he wants you to forgive before you even approach him. Right? Because we're going to go to him and say, Lord, forgive me for X, Y, Z, these things that I've done. Yet, I'm harboring unforgiveness towards somebody else. He says, no, you address that first. Then you come to me. And we'll talk about me forgiving you. Right? He wants us to extend the same thing to others that we're asking him for. Okay? Matthew 18, 21 to 22. Lauren, can you see that? If you can, you can read it. Uh, then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy-seven times. Yeah. I think it's seventy times seven yeah. is what he said. So that's a typo. Seventy times seven. Willow. Seventy times seven. Can you remember that? Do you remember the prizes that we have at the end? Okay. Well, then you need to remember 70 times 7. Can you remember that? 70, 70 times 7. Dad's going to help you remember that. Okay. 70 times 7. All right. Luke 6, 37. Angel, can you read that from all the way back there? Okay. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. That's pretty big. I do that. So if we don't forgive others, what does that mean for us? Presley, what's it mean if we don't forgive and we have to stand before God? Um, like he, wants us, he wants us to forgive before he forgives us. Kind of. But what if we don't and we pass away and we have to stand before him? What does that say? What does this word condemn mean? Um, like right. And wh where do you go if you're not forgiven by God? Exactly. We don't want to be in a position to not be in eternity with our Heavenly Father. We do not want to be separated from Him because of our unforgiveness. That's not where we're going to go, right? We're going to forgive everybody. We're going to give everybody the same mercy we were extended. Did Jesus forgive people, Willow? Yes. He did, right? Luke 23, 34. Sure. You want to read it? <clears throat> Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. Can anybody think of a worse situation than being murdered to forgive somebody in? And not just, not just murder like somebody pulled a gun on you and shot you and it was over quickly. Like murder in the sense of extreme torture, embarrassment, right? Everything that you could ever possibly encounter in a situation where you'd need to forgive somebody. Jesus literally encountered it on the cross, right? 
and the journey to the cross, carrying the cross, carrying the heavy burden of the cross, right? People spitting on him. She's okay. Um, so we can look at Jesus and understand it's not like we don't have a high priest who's encountered all of the things that we've encountered. Okay? So this is where we can step into forgiveness and we don't have to feel like there's nobody who understands. Okay? How many times do I have to? Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone? Who sins against me 70 times? No, not seven times. Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. There we go. We got it right there. Perfect. Can you do the math on that? 70 times seven? What's seven times seven? Yeah, and add a zero. Yeah, that's a lot of times, right? And he's not concentrating on the literal number 490. He's saying, as many times as you get offended or need to forgive, forgive them. Right? Okay. Oh, we got a little. Ooh, Willow, what's this? Look. Okay, we're going to watch this together. Come on. Maybe. Let me turn this up. Mm -hmm. Let's watch it. This is Jesus. Hey, -o who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. Shh, shh, shh. You gotta watch. He did many miracles like walking me. on water. Come sit with me. Come here. Right here. And even raised people from the dead. Wow. One day, Jesus was talking with his disciples and teaching them. They teach them. Okay, watch. Asked, um, here, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? Jesus said, no, not seven times, but 70 times seven. Then Jesus told a parable. He said, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to get his money back that he had let his servants borrow. While the king was doing this, one of the servants who owed him a million dollars was brought in. A million dollars? That's a lot of money. The servant couldn't pay, so the king ordered that he be sold, along with his family and everything he owned, to pay the debt. But the servant begged the king, please be patient with me and I will pay it all. Then his king was filled with pity for him and he let him go and forgave his debt. He forgave him, right? Wow. He forgave him. When the man left the he was being nice. He went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. Uh, oh, the mouth oh, so He grabbed him so and demanded bad. that he pay him back. Look, he's being mean. Oh, wait, wait. His fellow servant begged for a little yep. more time. He said, be patient with me and I will pay it. No. But the servant wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison. <gasps> oh, until that is me. Full. When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him everything that had happened. Oh, yeah, it's nice. Then the king called in the she man you. Given and said, You evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had mercy on you? <gasps> then the angry king sent the man to prison to be punished until he had paid all that he owed. Jesus then said, what? That's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Wow. That was good. That is a good story, though. Who's the king in the story? Um, him. God. Okay. The father, right? God the father. And who would be the servant that got forgiven? Us. Okay. So who's the person that came to the servant that got forgiven? Right? And asked to be forgiven. Who do you think that would be? Anybody, right? Anybody who needs forgiveness from us? So it could be like Madison, or it could be the bully at school, right? Okay. And 
what happened was other people around saw, hey, you're not forgiving this person their debt. Okay, so the father ends up knowing, right? Of course, he knows everything. And then what? They get taken away, okay, until everything is paid. Notice he said, forgive from the heart. Forgive from the heart. What is that, do you think? Um, it's not like just like saying that you forgive them, but like you actually have to mean it. Right. Right. It's a heart position. Now, sometimes that's really hard to do, right? And you want to do it, but it's hard to do. How can we get over that? Prayer. Spirit only. <laughs> yeah. Stinky. That's on one of these slides. I'm going to come back to that point. So who gets hurt if we don't forgive? Teresa, who do you think? Us. Yeah. Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. yeah. Son. Yep. Everybody. But most of all, you, right? Yeah. Because if I don't forgive Thomas, let's say he doesn't even know I'm mad at him, right? I go home and I'm thinking about it. I'm upset. Do you even know? No. Do you even care? Of course not. You can't. You can't. So I'm carrying this burden. I'm carrying the heaviness. I'm having the negative thoughts. It's affecting me. And then what happens when I stand before God? Who Do you get in trouble before God for my unforgiveness towards you? Even if you did something wrong? No. The punishment's on me for not doing the right thing. So ultimately, it's really hurting ourselves. So that's important to know. We don't want to be hurt. We try to avoid being hurt, right? So this is good practice. So what happens when we do forgive? Angel, what do you think happens when we do forgive? Everything goes, well, most things go better. At least we'll find peace in our heart, even if they are like Yeah. So that's a good point. You could for forgive somebody for something they've done. Mm -hmm. So say, say you were abused as a child, okay? and you held unforgiveness towards a, a family member, right? They may never give you the closure you want. They may never say, I'm sorry back, right? Or I need you to forgive me for my part. Doesn't matter, okay? So what, what else happens when we do forgive? We heal, break up curses. Okay, so people are happy to be forgiven, right? It makes them feel better. So say that, you know, um, something happened, but you've been carrying unforgiveness. Say it broke up that, that friendship or that relationship. When it's mended, those people are happy. It makes them feel better. God is happy when we choose to forgive, which is what Teresa said. We stop judging people and start showing mercy. That's great because we already know that our Heavenly Father commissioned us to forgive. We feel happy because we choose to forgive. So the heaviness is gone, right? The burden is gone. That negative feeling is gone. And we don't care anymore, right? We just let it go to the Lord, which is great. And then God will forgive us. That's the big thing. That probably should have been number one. God will forgive us as we forgive others. Okay, what if somebody did something very bad to me, Willow? Yeah. What if somebody did something super bad? Yeah. Do we still forgive them? Yeah. Okay. What Let's... Are go to? Okay. Thomas, you want to read that? Yeah. <clears throat> Ephesians 6, 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So we need to remember who's really doing these things to us, right? This is a spiritual battle. So people are being used to destroy each other. People are created in God's image. God loves everybody he created. He wants all to be saved. We know that through the word. He wants all to come to repentance. He wants nobody to perish, right? So who's really doing it? Who was in those bullies and, you know, your, your friends, right? A bullying spirit, a spirit of rejection, right? Something trying to come against you to trigger maybe something in you, right? Insecurity or 
or whatever, those spirits are working together to destroy the people. They have a plan. They're trying to set up a situation to get you into unforgiveness. So we need to learn how to fight spiritually. You can come against the devil all you want, but you cannot come against people because God wants them healed and delivered. Something I ask people often when I'm counseling them is, would you rather see them healed and delivered and set free and becoming who God wanted them to be originally? Or would you rather see them burning in hell for eternity? Mm. Is there anybody that you can think of in your life that you would choose hell for eternity, Thomas? I mean, kind of, but that just means I have issues I need to work out. That's exactly what that question is meant for. Right? Yeah. Because if Jesus said, Thomas, you were destined for that place. Amen. And I chose to forgive you. You don't get to say, yeah, I wish that they would perish. Hmm. Because if you really met who they truly were be and following after Christ, they wouldn't be that person. Exactly. They've given their will over to an evil spirit. And if that spirit were to leave and they were to partner with the spirit of God, they wouldn't be doing those things. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So that's a good question to ask yourselves. Okay. How do I forgive? That can be very difficult. What are some strategies we could use to learn how to forgive? How about asking Jesus for help? That's a good one, right? We prayed about the bullies, right? We went before the Lord and asked him for the strength to do it and boldness, right? Okay. Choose to give mercy and not judgment. Make a decision in your mind, right? Make a decision. And then you can ask the Lord to help you with your heart. Remember, God loves that person and wants you to pray for them. A lot of the people that we know don't know any Christians except for you. Right? Lauren and I have talked about our backgrounds. I guarantee you that 90% of the people we were hanging out with don't have Christians in their family. Who's going to pray for them? Even if they hurt you, right? We can pray for them. We can intercede for them. I think Julie said something about, uh, about this, and she's like, anytime you, that's, that's just God. Um, God, what is the word? God basically calling you to, to be an intercessor. Yeah, I mean, you, been given an assignment. It's fine. we can sit around and feel bad or depressed or angry or bitter, or we can come against the true enemy, which would be the devil, and we can forgive the person and lift them up in prayer. And so the angels hearken to God's word. So if we're asking the father to give them help and to help them realize these situations that are happening for them, right, and send those ministering spirits to help, he will do that because he hearkens to his word. Okay? Remember how kind God was to forgive you for your sins. Okay? That's a big one. That is a big one. We all needed forgiveness. All of us deserved the punishment of death. We all broke God's law. Right? We all blasphemed his name. We all got into sorcery. We all did all these things. Right? He never wanted that for us. These were our choices. So his mercy, we should be extending to others to give, you know, hopefully through intercession and through the love of Christ being shown, they change their mind. They wonder what's different about you, right? I'm sure you've had people from the past go, you're not the same person. Yeah, <laughs> right? Me too. Teresa, I'm sure you've had people be like, whoa, what's going on with your family? That's crazy. You changed. Who are you? Yeah. What happened to you? Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> You're not fun anymore. <laughs> Remember that only God can judge because he's perfect. We are far from perfect. Super far from perfect, right? It's only God working in us that creates any sort of goodness anyway. Right? So we can't rely on our own goodness and our own righteousness and our own ideas. We need to give it all to God and let him deal with that. Apologize to the person for your part. Now this is a, this can be a dicey one, right? Oh, yeah. 
You may have a situation where you can apologize. You may not. You may have people that have already passed away that you can apologize to, right? But you can apologize to your heavenly father for holding on forgiveness, right? And if you do have an opportunity to forgive and the Lord is leading you to apologize in person, do it. Just do it. Even if you don't get the response that you want, that's okay. You're being obedient to God. And that's what matters. It's not about the response of the people. It's about obedience to the Lord, right? And what you'll see out of that is really great fruit. Okay. Oh, prizes. Willow, you're going to like this slide. Do you know what that says? Yeah. Questions for candy. <laughs> she just got a big smile. <laughs> Questions for candy. Yes. Do you know what that means? No. It's prize time. Can you answer a question? Yeah. Who gets hurt the most when we don't forgive? I do. Um, <laughs> exactly. Um, you do. I, you do. I do. Okay. How many times did Jesus say to forgive? Remember what I told you to memorize? One. Oh, what's the number? Remember? The number. Seventy, Seventy times, times seven. Seven. Whoa. Nice job. Okay. Racking up some prizes here. Yay. Okay. Who's our real problem with? Ourself? Wait. <laughs> Ourself? I hope not. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. The devil. Does forgiving someone make God happy or sad? Does Willow, for a prize, does forgiving somebody make God happy or sad? Um, sad. Forgiving somebody makes him happy. Yes, it makes him happy. Did Jesus have to forgive people, Lauren? Uh, did Jesus have to forgive people? Yes. No. yes, he did. Okay, great. Everybody gets a prize. Everybody gets a prize. Yay. Uh, we, we get one prize or two. Well, I'm going to think about that. Okay, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to give you guys your, your prizes right after we pray. Okay, so we're going to have uh, Angel and Kelly help us pray for you guys okay does that sound good okay all right that wraps up this this part thank you lord